In a previous video, I purchased a few of these Lito Kala 32700 lithium iron phosphate cells on AliExpress to test them out to see how good they were. People greatly enjoyed that video and as a result of viewers taking the time to share the video on social networking sites, the video did fairly well. In the comments section of that video, viewers asked to see the capacity test for these 32700 cells at a higher discharge rate. So in today's video, I'll be testing two 32700 cells to see how they perform using a 15 amp and a 20 amp constant current drain. I'll also be monitoring the temperature using a thermal camera. Now to perform the test, I'll be using this dual channel programmable DC electronic load made by East Tester, model ET5420. This is a dual voltage unit. It will operate at 110 volts or 220 volts. It has high accuracy, readings within 0.1%. Each channel, you have input one and input two, can test a battery or power supply up to 150 volts and 20 amps. So 40 amps in total, 20 and 20. Because this unit is high accuracy, you're going to see me use this in future videos for testing batteries and lithium ion and lithium iron phosphate cells. I now have the ability to test constant current, constant resistance, constant power, constant voltage, short circuit tests, and much more. You can also control this electronic load from a computer by using a cable. Put this on first. Now if I press shift and then mode, here you can see constant current, constant voltage constant power, constant resistance, and it goes all the way down. So I'm gonna put this down to battery test. Enter. Over here you can see it says constant current, channel one. This turns on channel one, this turns on channel two. It actually turns it on and off. And when you push this button right here, channel, it switches between channel one and channel two. This has a lot of features, so I'm not gonna get into all of them right now. As time goes by, you're going to see me using this unit more, and you'll be able to see how all the settings are made. Even though this has the ability to test both at the same time, I'm only going to be performing one test at a time. By doing that, I could put most of my attention into that one cell by monitoring the temperature of it. I could record every two or three minutes with the voltages. I could plot it on a graph. So I'm just gonna be doing one at a time. So before connecting the first cell, let me go into the settings. I'll push shift and then menu, constant current, that's fine. If I wanted, I could push enter, and now it says constant resistance. You can enter how many ohms, and you'll have a constant resistance placed on that cell for the test. So we're just gonna do constant current. Let me just push right here, now it's back. Okay, constant current. And I wanna just have it go from 3.6 volts all the way down to a maximum discharge of 2.5 volts. And the way this is designed, this machine, is you could do it in different levels. If I wanted, I could make this right here 3.4 volts, and I could put like one amp. So what'll happen, the starting voltage is around 3.6 or 3.5, it's going to drop down using that one amp discharge rate at 3.4 volts. Once it drops below 3.4, then it will use the next level and you can keep going lower and lower three times. But I'm not going to be doing that. I'm going to leave everything at zero and I wanna have a 15 amp drain. So let's take this knob and rotate it to a different position. Enter. And now I can go over here. All right, so we have 15 amps. Let's move back over to here. Okay, let's hit enter. Now I'm gonna make this cutoff voltage. Let's go over to there, enter. Very hard to see with the camera. I'm looking at an angle and I have a glare. So if you see me miss a digit and go back, that's why. So now we have 2.5. All right, and all the rest of these, I'm just gonna go down. Now that we're set, I hit Shift, Escape. Over here, battery current, 15 amp load, 2.5 volts is going to be the cutoff voltage. 
and you're going to see the capacity adding up right over here. So let me connect the leads up to channel one. I'm going to be using these that I made. And I can push these off to the side. Okay. The next thing I need to do is take the cell and make sure it's fully charged. I'm going to be using this multi-purpose charger. It goes up to three amps and it does all different types of battery chemistries. Slide this back. And you can see we connected there. Push this twice quick. And now I'm going to move lithium iron phosphate. And I'm going to go over here and just set it at one amp. Push and hold. And that is it. As you can see, we're now fully charged, 100%. It only took about four minutes because this cell was fully charged not too long ago. Let's take this out. And you can see 3588. We just completed the charging at 3.6. Now I'm going to start the test by turning on channel one. And you can see under that huge load of 15 amps, the voltage pulled right down to 2.812. Let's see how long it takes for that cell to drop to 2.5 volts using a 15 amp load. This was set at 15 amps and you can see it's very close. That's only 12 or 13 milliamps. And that means it's less than 0.1% away from that 15 amp setting. The voltage stabilized right around 2.75 and I suspect it's going to hold that level for quite a while. And we're right around 40C after five minutes. Okay, 10 minutes in. Hopefully you can see that. It's around 43C. Now getting closer to three amp hours. We started at 3.588 at 2.746. That's after 12 minutes. Forty eight point five C. The maximum limit for these cells is at sixty C. Okay, we've been going for quite a while. We're down to two point six eight and five point one amp hour. The wattage drops slightly due to the lower voltage. Holding steady right around 15.012 to 014. 52.1C. 5.5, it would be nice to make it to at least 6 amp hours. Once this hits 2.5, it's all over. Oh boy, we're getting close. Can we make it to six? I don't know. This is speeding up a little bit over here. It's going to be very close. 0.5. Oh, and that was it. 2.5 volts. Pretty good. 6.008 amp hours. And a quick look at the temperature of the cell now that we're finished. fifty four point four C alright so it didn't exceed the sixty during the fifteen amp test but I have a feeling when we do the twenty amp test this is definitely gonna go over sixty and right here you can see the discharge curve at fifteen amps capacity six point zero zero eight amp hours started off at three five eight eight drained all the way down to two point five and it took just over twenty four minutes as you can see by looking at the chart, the voltage was fairly stable in that 2.7 volt range. I'm going to let this one cool and I'm going to take the other cell which is fully charged and start with test number two. We are now set up for the 20 amp current drain test. You can see 0 .002 amp hours. That will reset to zero as soon as I push the on button. Starting voltage is 3.553. Okay, let's see what kind of a drop we get. And it's dropping down pretty low. Hopefully it stabilizes. 55 watts. And you can see 20.015 amps. 
after six and a half minutes we're at 2.3 amps and the fan just kicked in and we're at 2.675 still pulling 53.57 watts right now we're just a little over 48 C I'll keep an eye on it holding fairly steady in that 2.65 to 2.66 range and right here we're at 54 C 13 and a half minutes has passed and we're at four and three quarter amp hours so we're getting close to completion let me take a look at the temperature of the cell again 58.8 okay we're getting very close to six and this is getting very close to 2.5 the cutoff Oh, and there we go. 5.805 amp hours. You see the voltage is going back up with the load removed. Now let's take a look at the temperature of that cell. Wow, it's 62.5. All right, so we exceeded it slightly. No big deal. Let's disconnect this. Allow that cell to cool off. Here's a look at the 20 amp discharge curve. Capacity 5.805 amp hours, a little less than the 15 amp discharge curve. To go from 3.553 all the way down to 2.5 took just over 17 minutes. And by looking at the chart, you could see it reached that level around 2.65 where it was fairly stable. And at the very end of the test, it started to drop off quicker. And that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, be sure to rate thumbs up. Share and check out my extensive video playlist for many other videos of interest to you. Thank you very much for watching.